hey, are you interested in peculiar army formations? Then you need to watch this episode. In this episode, I'm going to tell you all about the Dutch army of 1940. An army that stood firm for several days during the German invasion of the Netherlands in May 1940. It is an army that I reenacted and also made a graduation film about. Stay tuned. Hey, good to have you back. This time at another episode of Formations. And if you think, hey, wait a second, Formations and who the hell is this guy? Okay, my name is Stefan. I'm a history teacher from the Netherlands and I'm hustling history for you. Also, I make episodes about army formations from the past. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the Dutch army. Let's start. Up until the outbreak of the First World War, most Dutch troops wore dark blue tunics. This changed during the First World War. Here you see an example of the old and new uniform from the late 19 teens. The M1916 helmet was introduced in 1916 and some troops wore this helmet during the German invasion of the Netherlands in 1940. Later in the 1920s, new uniforms were introduced. The color variated a little bit from the grey tunics we saw earlier and was called grey-green. Actually, it deviated not that much from the German field grey uniform. Okay, so now we're going to take a closer look at the Dutch uniform and equipment. So let's get the gear out. Here you see the field cap. Then there is the helmet. Now I already mentioned the M1916 helmet. Now there were two other types of helmets that were produced later. The M1927 and the M1934. I never actually know which kind of type this helmet is. So if you have any idea, please leave a comment down below. Now what is very distinctive is the lion plate in front of the helmet. During the German invasion of the Netherlands, there was panic among Dutch soldiers that if they would get hit on that part of the helmet they would have the risk of more physical damage. So therefore soldiers tried to get rid of the line plate. I'm not exactly sure to what extent this happened. Again if you have any concrete facts leave them down below. Now we get to the tunic. The tunic was green grey and it had blue piping for infantry, red for artillery. It had a standing collar. Now there were experimental uniforms with a flat collar, but most Dutch soldiers that fought during the German invasion of the Netherlands in May 1940 carrying a standing collar. Then we get down to the brown leather belt. It was provided with carrying straps to divide the weight of the equipment around the shoulders. Here you see the ammunition pouches. A soldier who assisted the men who operated the Lewis gun had a bigger pouch in order to stash a Lewis cartridge. Here is the bread bag and the canteen. Now often soldiers connected the cork of their canteen with their canteen with a small piece of rope so it wouldn't get lost. On the back we have the mess thin. Here we see a shovel and a leather shovel holder and of course a bayonet. Here you see the bayonet. There was an old and a new model. The old model they still had this hook. New one they were produced without a hook. Did you know that when the British entered the first world war their troops had bayonets with parallel rods and these were horrendous when it came down to attacking because often soldiers got stuck into the barbed wire with their parallel rods of their bayonets. Here you see how you can attach the bayonet on the rifle. Then there was also a longer bayonet which was used for the carbine and the shorter one was used for the rifle. Since the first world war troops were in need of gas masks. Here we have the gas mask back and the gas mask itself. Here we see the breached trousers and then we get down to the patties. Now the patties in Dutch were called bane winsels or lag wraps so to say. But also they used the English word only they pronounce it differently like putties. It's interesting how to put these on. You basically had to make sure that there can be no dirt that gets inside your shoe and don't wrap it too tight. You don't want to cut off your blood circulation. 
Here you see the black leather shoes. Did you know that these shoes nowadays are often worn? They kind of look like the classical Dr. Martin type of shoe. Although these days they don't have the hop nails, the iron hop nails you see beneath them. These are reproduced British ammo boots, so the hop nails aren't quite correct, but you get the point. Soldiers were allowed to wear their own shoes, but they had to be black and of course high enough to wear the puttees. And then we get to the rifle. This here is the Mannlicher Rifle M1895, which was designed by the Austrian Ferdinand Ritter von Mannlicher. A lot of these rifles have been produced at the Austrian city of Steyr. These rifles replaced the Dutch Beaumont rifle. From 1904, the Dutch produced the rifles themselves under the name of Hembrug. So these rifles are often called Hembrug rifles and around half a million of them have been produced. Now the butt of the rifle there was also a stamp from the Dutch Queen. There also exists a really rare periscope rifle. Then there was also the Hembrug carbine. Now there were different models of carbines and they were used by the cavalry, by the Koninklijke Marechaussee, the Royal Military Constabulary Corps, as well as pioneer artillery and bicycle troops. And yep, you heard that correctly, bicycle troops. And I know some of you will start laughing and think that the Dutch soldiers went on their bikes to fight the German tanks. I mean, that's kind of the same as thinking that the Polish troops went on their horses towards the tanks. No, the bicycles proved an effective way of transporting troops. And did you know that a lot of these rifles were transported to Germany and at the end of the war, 1944, they were handed over to the Volkssturm, which was basically the last German army and consisted of these very old men in civilian clothing. A lot of them fought with Dutch Hembrug rifles. Now there were also great coats. If you look at the officers, the officers they had a different tunic which consisted of four pockets. Their rank distinctions were located on the collar. With NCOs, it was on the end of each sleeve. Officers, they carried a Sam Brown belt with a pistol and an extra pouch for ammunition. Also, they had a saber, a so-called klebang, a weapon that found its origin in the Dutch East Indies. Some of them had a storm dolk or an assault dagger. Shoes with putties were often worn by officers as well, but also long jack boots or shoes with black leather leggings were an option. And then there's also this type of boots. I don't know the English name, but in Dutch we call them Rijlaarse. I mean, yeah, they look pretty cool. On the early morning of the 10th of May 1940, the first German troops crossed the Dutch border. The Germans pushed through in the north and the south of the Netherlands practically unopposed. Air raids were carried out on specific targets and paratroopers and air landing troops were dropped near Dordrecht, Rotterdam and Den Haag. The Battle of the Grebbeberg lasted till May 13. The Germans broke through there, but other units didn't manage to push through over the Afsluitdijk in the north. Therefore, the Dutch won the Battle of the Afsluitdijk. Also, German air landing troops got pinned down at Rotterdam. On the 14th, Rotterdam was bombed and the next day, the Dutch unconditional surrender was a fact with the exception of Zeeland that fought off for a few more days since there were a lot of elite troops located there. The Battle of the Netherlands was over and the occupation had begun. Some Dutch soldiers lived to fight another day. It were those that weren't captured by the Germans and managed to get away to England. They later formed the Princess Irene Brigade and they were handed over new British uniforms since the older ones were fairly obsolete by now. And it's funny because I remember from my reenactment days a lot of people at events thought we were portraying an army from the First World War. And a lot of people thought that we were Germans. I mean, come on, right? This uniform doesn't look German, does it? But, you know, maybe that's a Dutch thing. I mean, we're fairly anti-militaristic, so a lot of times when a Dutch person sees a uniform from the past, he or she doesn't recognize immediately. Oh, that must be German, right? Thanks to my patrons you see on screen, and a special thanks to Henry Clarkson, Cooling Castleman, the President, Michael Nosek, and Wombat Cookie. If you want to support me, go to the link right here.
Hey, if you want to learn more about the Dutch colonial army, the Royal Netherlands East Indies Army, you click right here. If you want to learn more about the German invasion of the Netherlands, you click right here. I want to thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe and de Groeten!